Guys, let's do this. You ask me to react to geography now, Italy, from Italy. So let's see together what's going on here. Let's see together if we can agree or disagree. Let's go. Bam. Well, I'm personally excited because today we cover the country where one quarter of my heritage comes from, Italia. There is no such thing as a single type of Italian. People from Sicilia would almost need a translator to understand people in Veneto. Napoli looks incredibly different from Milano. And people from South Tyrol are like, uh, warum sind wir hier? We agree so far to everything he said. For what it's worth, Italy has definitely made its mark. And today we jump in. Va bene? Cominciamo! Andiamo, forza, dai! It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs, derived from my last name Barbato, which translates to Beard Man. I'm serious. Hey, laugh all you want, but that just means I might be related. Beard Man, like man with a beard, sounds probably better, but yeah, I guess it's a uh, beard man is accurate. It's a Scipio Africanus Barbatus, the guy who defeated Hannibal in, I think, the Second Punic War. So ha! I got victory in my blood! Scipio Africanus Barbatus. Actually, I didn't know the name of this guy. I love the name, though. Scipio Africanus Barbatus. He probably belonged to the part of the Roman Empire in the Northern Africa. Good. Now, I'm probably related to some ancient guy that sold barley or something. Barley that was eaten by Scipio Africanus. Barley, that's an English word, okay? English word. Canus Barbatus who defeated Hannibal. So yes, I still got Probably at the time didn't even exist yet English. Got it. I basically defeated Hannibal. But where was Hannibal defeated? Let's find out in... In Italy, it's all about tutte le strada portano a Roma. First of all, Italy is that boot-shaped country kicking two deflated soccer balls located in Europe at the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, bordered by France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia in the north, and two microstates are completely engulfed within Italy, the Vatican City and San Marino, which is like the easiest country to sneak into. Like seriously, there's a Japanese restaurant and a sports store next to- <laughs> Japanese restaurant, <laughs> that's kind of funny. And also, what a location, eh? what a beautiful geographical location to be in. To the entrance with no guards. With two, this makes Italy the country with the most other countries enclaved inside of it. South Africa was so close with Swaziland, but then Mozambique had to exist. Oh, and there was that time Reggio tried to secede from Italy back in the 70s, which almost made it three, but that's a whole other story. Just look it up. The country is divided into 20 regions with the capital Rome. Five come, of the regions I have- I come from Campania right here at the very south. I love that area, so nice, especially now. Special autonomous status, Sardinia, Sicily, Trentino Alto, or Sud Tirol, otherwise known as South Tyrol, Yaosta Valley, and Friuli Venezia Giulia. The country's largest cities are, of course, the capital Rome, then Milano and Napoli, Napoli. with the busiest airports being Rome, Leonardo da Vinci, Fiumicino, Milan, Malpensa, and Bergamo Caravaggio International Airports. In addition to the two largest islands, Sicilia and Sardinia, the country owns over 350 islands off its coast. Finally, there's that land dispute with France over over the summit of Mont Blanc and a small little two and a half kilometer long enclave in Switzerland called Campione d'Italia, which is kind of actually my father worked here as a teenager, like I think he was 19 or so. I have to ask, yeah, he went to work here because there is um, a casino. Well, he went to work in an hotel actually, but yeah, it's famous for casinos like a special spot exempt from the EU value added tax zone which makes sense because it has Italy's largest casino Phew, Italy you got some complication fanatics going on the funny thing is modern Italy once even tried to take a stab at colonialism in the late 19th and early 20th centuries with areas stretching from the Balkans northern Africa and the Horn of Africa including a short kind of occupation of Ethiopia but it didn't last that long because the Ethiopians fought back relentlessly wow. and to this day it's back to the boot with two deflated soccer balls guys I'll convert metric for you but I call it soccer okay the Canadians South Africans Australians Kiwis, Japanese, and parts of Ireland and the Philippines and Papua New Guinea all agree with me, okay? It's not just Americans that call it soccer. Voy dire calcio. Okay, good luck with that. Now this is the part where I typically go football. Yes. Down the list of notable sites found in Italy. However, the problem is there are literally too many. I'm not even joking. Italy has more heritage sites than any other country in the world at over 50. We all know about the big guys, so I'm not going to mention most of them. Instead, through my extensive research, here are some obscure lesser known. Man, Italy's so rich or hard. And then, of course, it makes sense because, uh, you know, after the, the Greek, uh, the Greeks and before the Greeks, of course, the Sumerian. And the Egyptian, I mean, it's a country that it's been uh, so diverse uh, and also evolving quite rapidly on the base of, you know, probably technology and knowledge from Greek and, and the Persians for thousands of years. So it doesn't surprise me because it was literally the center of the world. I mean, the Mediterranean was, after all, I mean.
yet equally fascinating spots worthy of noting. The dining table of Bilalante, the Bomarzo Horror Garden, Ai Piapi, a theme park made of rides that require your own kinetic energy to operate, the necropolis of Banditaccia, La Scarzuola Monastery, the free wine... Some of those, they feel like some, some kind of like uh, self-made stuff though, which I've never heard of. Fountain of Camino di San Tommaso. Let that just sink in. Free wine. The relics of Jesus' apostle St. Thomas. The geothermal waterfalls of Tuscany. The sunken city of Baia. The cliffside town of Santa Gata de Go. Santa Gata de Go. The, uh, this is great. Look at this. Wow. Fantastic. The sulfuric fields of Puzzuoli, that fortress built by that crazy guy, Urbania mummies, the Custino sword in the stone, the nine layer maze of Villa Pisani, the road of 52 tunnels, the pure. The road of 52 tunnels, that sounds interesting. They're actually also, uh, I forgot the name, they're a very ancient um, monolithic and also stone uh, monuments in Sardinia, which they're absolutely, probably they predate like everything of thousands and thousands of years. Very, very interesting, actually. I forgot the name, but there is also that type of stuff, probably before the Etrusks. Pyramid zone of Castello, the Encantado heads carved by a crazy guy. There's a lot of monuments made by crazy people. And of course, way too many castles, fortresses, churches, monasteries, museums, and ancient sites to list, but you get the point. Now let's blast off like a volcano, which Italy has, into the next segment, shall we? <laughs> Now, we all know that Italy is insanely beautiful in so many areas. Everybody wants to see it. I mean, even Mr. and Mrs. Information went there on their honeymoon. You're welcome. First of all, Italy's beauty comes at a cost. The country lies just above the convergence of the Eurasian and African plates in the Mediterranean, but also on the Apennine or Apennine thrust fault line that smashes into Western... Actually, there are three major volcanoes here. Like, there is, uh, of course, the, the Etna, but then here you have uh, Stromboli. Then you also Volcano uh, next to Lipari. And then you have, of course, the Vesuvio, where I come from. I grew up looking at the Vesuvio from the window of the house on the other side of the Gulf of Naples. But it's not active uh, because it's closed. But actually, there are active vents underneath into the sea all the way to Ischia, which is an island right here where you have like... Uh, uh, warm uh, thermal water, warm, you know, thermal water. Europe, and that's how the Alps were formed. Basically, the Alps make like a barrier in the north with the Apennine Mountains running along the entire length of the country as like a scoopy spine until it technically ends in the island of Sicilia. Because Italy's mountains are volcanic fault formed, it has created some amazing natural formations like the Dolomiti Rocks, the steep sides of Lake Garda, the... Actually, I lived close by here. I lived in the north, on the Lake of Garda, but the Lago di Lugano on the side of Italy from Switzerland. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic stuff to look at those mountains like this, uh, but also the side of Switzerland, absolutely beautiful. Largest lake in Italy, the Umbria Valleys, the undulating hills of Tuscany. This also means that Italy is kind of split in half east and west with a major lush basin locked in the north that receives an abundance of fresh snow cap water melt, creating rivers like the longest one, the Po River, located yeah. in the aptly named Po Valley. This valley extends about 650 kilometers, 400 miles, all the way from the French border to the Adriatic Sea, which ends at a little city you may have heard of called Venezia, or Venice. This also means that Italy is a volcanic country. To this day, there are about 30 volcanoes, three known active ones. Etna Stromboli and the famous Vesuvius making it the most densely populated and potentially deadly volcanic yeah I live right here like at the end here so this is the island of Capri and I, I, I always lived in of course in this area where from the hills I could see Capri I could see Hiskia on this side and I could see the Vesuvio you know and in Naples is just on this other side here so this is all area like all like Castellamare, Ercolano, San Giorgio Cremano and all those other cities of the interland. Which uh, also, th this is the area where you have Pompeii, where you have the ruins, but also Ercolano has some uh, Roman uh, ruins. Here is the area where uh, Pink Floyd went to play, you know, in Pompeii. Absolutely beautiful. And because of the volcano, this is such an incredibly rich area to cultivate wine, and in general stuff, you know, I wish it was kept a little bit better because uh, it's such a uh, an heritage, you know, like truly wonderful to truly blessed by the weather to grow Region whatever you want. World. It's like, yeah, I know I could die, but oh man, the pizza here is totally worth it. Speaking of which, about a... I agree, the pizza there, it's worth it. Quarter of the land is arable, allowing them to grow lots of food. I'm sure you are fully aware of the typical Italian dishes. However, each region kind of... Spe None of those pictures, they represent actually the real... What, what was that pizza? What the hell is that? First of all, 
Huh? Yeah, I know I could die, but oh man, the pizza here. That's not... What is that? It's totally worth it. Speaking of which, about a quarter of the land is arable, allowing them to grow lots of food. I'm sure you are fully aware of the typical Italian dishes, however... E Look at this. What is this? Huh? What is this? This is bread with cheese on. What the hell is that? Each region kind of specializes in a certain cuisine. In the north, you have foods like polenta, gnocchi, white truffles, Liguria has great pesto, and in South Tyrol, you have Germanic-inspired dishes like... He's not wrong, also Strudel. I had a good friend uh, that he spoke both uh, German and Italian. He was working at a famous restaurant where I come from to learn. A famous restaurant at the time at Three Michelin Stars. So, and he also so it was a DJ host metal guy we, we actually had a really nice friendship with him and his girlfriend and some of his friends yeah, that summer it was really really nice so i discovered a little bit of those things noodle dumplings and strudel in the center you have things like lasagna boar artichokes lamb steak gelato pasta which comes in over 600 very gelato real gelato huh pasta pasta also you should mention gragnano a little bit in campania which is the place where they have the oldest you know, Gragnano is the oldest place where pasta was created. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, Gragnano, the best pasta in the world. Asians, indisputably the best wine is in Toscana. Also, the first rail station uh, in Europe, I think, if I'm not mistaken. The south is the pizza kingdom and Napoli is like the capital. Sardinia is known for those... Dude. Eh? Uh, Napolitan here. I'm not happy with that picture, okay? Next time... Put a freaking Napolitan pizza as a picture. That thing, whatever that is, it's not it. Cool cheese fritter dumpling things. Italy enjoys a mild Mediterranean climate, only snowing in the north and high altitude areas. Now, despite deforestation and pollution being an issue and Venice flooding almost every year now, Italy is actually the most fauna biodiverse country in Europe with over yeah. 57,000 species recorded. That's about a third of all European fauna. About 4,800 are endemic like the Sardinian red deer, the Italian cave salamander, the alpine marmot, Marsican brown bear, the crested porcupine, and the national animal, the Italian wolf. Yeah, it's amazing. Actually, you know, like, I don't think now there is probably in the period of the pandemic uh, I, I remember watching some videos that they still saw some bears smaller bears uh, Italy is such a wonderful territory especially all the spine of the Apennini where you had wolves and bears I mean it's un even where I come from right uh, was known to uh, to have some wolves because some of the, um, uh, you know, just where I live, there's also mountainous part, which they go up pretty high, actually, up to like a thousand meter from uh, uh, sea level. Even this in Vesuvia, I think it's 1200 meter or so high. So it's actually pretty high. And in the winter, sometimes you have, you know, the snow on the peak, which looks like a little bit also the, the, like the volcano in Japan. It's so funny because... I tell you this anecdote it has nothing to do with this video but we in Italy we grew up with uh, uh, Japanese animation it's very common place in Italy if you ask anybody of my age or or even younger or older that we grew up with Japanese animation like literally that's the only thing they show 99% 90% was what we were watching on TV uh, everything of course translated in Italian but one thing that was common uh, looking at Tokyo usually through the cartoon through the animation was often to see this volcano with the snow on and it's funny because when we were kids somehow we thought that they kind of were depicting where we were where we come from you know where we came from in Naples because that's exactly how I looked outside and it looked to me you know this volcano with the snow on and only of course later on when I grew up I, I, I understood that there was also the volcano in, in Japan, in Tokyo. So absolutely fascinating, that kind of connection and similarity to this day. Uh, I lost the thread, but anyway, I just wanted to share that. Otherwise, as the eighth largest nominal GDP in the world and the eighth largest exporter, Italy's economy is heavily driven off of industry and production, specifically in luxury items. Major world-renowned companies like Fiat, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, Ducati, Pirelli, Armani, and Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, and Prada are key players in keeping Italy afloat. In many ways, there's kind of like a sense of class that's almost expected mm. with being Italian. No matter how intense things may get, you don't just waltz in here with your shoes unpolished. Which brings us to... Well, I think something that is missing here also is the fact that um, Italy could have become much more powerful economically 
but it lost half of the country in a sense because I, I think in the time and actually I live in the country that benefited from it I live in Amsterdam I think after the 1500 or so uh, there was a shift in the maritime economy before everything happened on the sea on the coastal city in the Mediterranean so there was a ton of trading happening in the Mediterranean from you know like uh, Turkey Greece and and you know all the other part of North Africa and of course Italy it's been always famous to have some of the oldest and, and you know naval cities in the world like Naples and, and Catania and Venice and Genova so there was a lot of trading uh, dating back to the Phoenician times but uh, in the 1500 on uh, in the era of the golden age for uh, you know Belgium and the Netherlands with uh, with the trading of the Indian uh, spice route and so on and so forth the shifting of uh, of of power happened where the trading sort of focused here in the north obviously because there was not Suez Canal so all the trading went through the ports here in the north and of course the northern part of Germany in the Netherlands and France of course you know Paris started to develop pretty rapidly and in fact in the period of in industrialized era the north of Italy was uh, geographically closer to the rest of, of Europe where things were evolving so that's the area that most industry developed in Italy kind of leaving the south a little bit empty-ended relying only on tourism they tried somewhere I don't remember when to do some uh, you know placing of industries in the south but of course it was not super convenient that's not to say that there isn't something now there is some stuff but of course the majority of the industry are concentrated from Turin to Lombardia uh, so um, th this is one of the reason why also the south has always problem with the north you know like in Italy there's always this thing about north and south and the, and the south calling the north uh, uh, Polentoni and the north calling the southern like Terroni which means like you know from terra from land like you know because probably they see us as less educated less rich more in touch with the land as farmers and therefore Terroni uh, so it's also a very peculiar, strange thing that there is discrimination among um, us Italian. I always thought, you know, because I lived both in the south and I also lived in the north and I found it always to be absolutely absurd. But this is also part of the reality and part of the economy uh, of Italy. Nowadays, though, because of the south uh, as such s some of the most beautiful coastal areas in the world there is literally millions of people visiting those cities I come from you know Sorrento uh, where like there is tons of people coming to visit the Amalfi Coast there is literally everybody like you go to Sorrento you go to Capri you can literally find any celebrity anyone from the US from everywhere being there one day eating a Los Coglio or a Quattro Passi or in Capri somewhere they're all there now, being Italian, we've all heard the stereotypes, loud, passionate, hand gesturing, bad driving, temperate, sensitive, clean freaks that never follow the rules. And as offensive as that may sound, it's kind of based It's offensive. Based off of truth, but with good- Also a little bit true, uh, but yeah, things have changed a little bit. I mean, if you drove in Naples in the 80s and 90s, Jesus, man, the only place where I thought I, I was more scared, and I don't mean to offend anybody here, but I come from Naples. I mean, I lived around Naples. I know Naples. And the only place where I was more scared <laughs> was both in Marrakesh, Casablanca, and in India. <laughs> where I saw the traffic, I'm like, wow, <laughs> this they just took it to another new level. So that was pretty reckless, especially in India. I was like, wow, I had to tell my drivers like, dude, these are the side of the road. You don't have to use it in the turn to overcome another car because there can be another car from the other side just following the normal, you know, sense of the traffic and we meet. We do not want to meet. He did not understand. I had to explain a few times, you know.
Good reasoning. We'll explain in a bit. But first, Italy has about 61 million people in their country, and they are the third most populous country in the EU after the whole Brexit thing, and the sixth in all of Europe. Getting the exact ethnic makeup in Italy is a little difficult because Italy is a lot more diverse than you would think. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Italian, although keep in mind that's kind of a broad term considering how many different types and shades of Italian there are, but nonetheless Italian. Whereas about 2% are Romanian, 1% North African, and the rest of the country is made up of a slew of global people groups, everything from Albania. Albanian, Eritrean, Chinese, and Ukrainians. They also use the Euro, the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, but you also have to see that a lot of us actually from the south, probably they we descend from. Uh, if you look at me, especially when I, you know, was I was younger with the darker hair and curlier hair, I, you know, a lot of people think that I'm from Israel or Turkey or uh, Greece because I have this, you know, long face and long nose. Um, definitely, in my blood, there is, you know heritage from this side here of the ancient part of the Mediterranean, 100%. When it comes to Italy, it basically comes down to two things, north and south. Southerners like to jokingly call northerners polentoni, based off of the polenta that they eat. And I just explained you this. Likewise, northerners like to call southerners terroni, which I actually don't even know where that's based off of. My research kind of ended there. If you know, type it in the comments. Basically, the north- I know, and I also explained it. North is like where all the financial districts and stereotypical uppity preppy people live, whereas the South is kind of like where the rustic tough people live. Plus, you know, the South is kind of like mafia territory. Oh, come on, everybody already knows it. You have the Costa Nostra in Sicilia, Ndrangheta in Calabria, the Comora in Campania, and the Sacra Corona Unita in Puglia. Don't worry though, if you visit as a tourist, you should be fine. It's not much of a big deal anymore. I mean, unless you start a mob war by yourself, nothing will pretty much happen. So, no starting mob wars, okay? Got it? Aww. There are so many. Uh, you know, it's also true that now those things, they're indistinguishable from businesses, you know, it's, it's a little bit like in the States where, you know, it's a well-known fact that all those families also coming from Sicily mostly, they, they, you know, in New York especially, I think they're all over the place. Now they're just businesses, you know, they control unions and so on and so forth. And it's similar things in Italy as well. It's, uh, uh, it's most likely, you know, those people own companies which they give services to the uh, to the region or to the municipalities around you know drink, drilling uh, galleries or whatever you know like that type of stuff now it's just bigger you you, you know there is micro criminality or smaller gangs or whatever you know those affiliation in some areas they're still there and are still not eradicated it's also Naples is much quieter nowadays but still there is a lot of you know stuff going on you gotta watch out where you walk when you walk of course even though things have improved uh, dramatically a lot you know in the past you could easily be mugged uh, because you you know you were carrying some jewelries or a bag or whatever so you had to watch out might might happen still today but actually i remember reading not long ago that actually a city like milan that had much more micro criminality than naples which unfortunately in Naples has always been notorious for that kind of micro criminality and stealing uh, scooters and cars and so on and so forth. I mean, I even wrote a song called The Napoli in English, trying to put in it some of those stereotypical things that happen to people that happen to us, actually different dialects and subgroups like South Tyrol mostly speaks German, kind of. Aosta Valley speaks French, sort of. No, but seriously, the standard Italian language spoken and taught today is based off of the Florentine version of Tuscan Italian, which is kind of like an intermediate between the Gallo-Romance dialects of the North and the Italo-Dalmatian dialects of the South. This all happened because prior to Italian unification, the country was split between multiple kingdoms and states, each with their own semi-Latin based language, which made communication yeah. a little bit of a challenge. For example, in standard Italian, you might say, di dove sei? But it's, uh, it's fascinating to think that because of the Roman Empire and then the split and everything basically that's all those other language formed from the Latin you know like Spanish and Portuguese and and and, and, and Fran French it's absolutely uh, mind-boggling actually when I think about it and Sicilian and actually the language that originated all of those died the Latin nobody speaks Latin anymore Unici in standard. Ciao, come stai? Tutto bene? But in Venetian. Actually, I don't know if you know, but in the past, not anymore now, but in the past, uh, um, until I think the 60s or the 70s, was quite common to find a priest giving, uh, you know, the mass on Sundays or every other mass in, in Latin. You know, it was still like a common thing 
and um, maybe some, today they still do in some parts, but I don't think so. Uh, come vale? To then in standard forchetta in Lombard. Forchetta, C H E. It's pronounced K, like K E K K. Forchetta, forchetta. Uh, Peru? This is one of the reasons why Italians attribute the creation of the famous Italian hand gestures. People would travel barely 50 kilometers and find themselves in a hard to understand dialect region. So essentially they had to kind of get their point across fast. There's a saying that Italians have l'arte di arrangiarsi, or the art of arranging, which translates to something like the art of figuring it out on your own. When words fail... Well, I think actually it's arrangiarsi, it's, uh, it's not like meant as a arranging stuff. But more like uh, arrangiarsi means you you work with what you got, you know. So with the tools that you have, you make them work for you, whatever that is, you know. Like if your life gives you lemon, you make uh, or you know lemon lemonade or something. So it's more uh, meant in that way. It's like I, I got this, I'm gonna make something out of it, you know. Th this is what I can do, so I, I'll do this. So that's the art of arrangiarsi. Make the best out of it with what you have named Rome. Speaking of which, even though the Italian monarchy ended long ago, there are still two descendants that still exist today acting as heir apparents. The Catholic Church has played a major role in Italy even to this day. Almost every single town has at least one church. About 88% of the country identifies as Catholic, however only a third say they are active practitioners on a weekly basis. And one of the reasons why Italy has made such a universal mark is partially because between the late 1800s and early 1900s, Italy experienced a mass emigration in which over the years around 25 million left. This is considered the largest mass migration of contemporary times. Suddenly you have new communities of Italians all over the world in places like Brazil, Argentina, the US, UK, and France. Oh wow, this video is running long and I didn't even get to talk about the deadly Calcio Florentino Game of Florence or, or the Santa Maria delle Grazie Snake Festival, Opera Pupi in Sicilia. So many cool things, but we gotta move on. Some notable people either from Italy or of Italian descent might include people like Cicero, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Dante Alighieri, Niccolo Machiavelli, Donatello, Caravaggio, Galileo Galilei, Christopher Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, Marco Polo, Niccolo Paganini, Giuseppe Garibaldi, Luigi Pirandello, Federico Fellini, Luciano Pavorati, Andrea Bocelli, Umberto Eco, Sofia Loren, Valentino Rossi. Uh, Pavarotti, and this is Valentino, no? Valentino Rossi. Uh, yeah. Roberto Baggio, Monica Bellucci, Silvio Berlusconi. He could have also skipped this guy. Enzo Ferrari, Donatello Versace, Giorgio Armani. Mainstream American artists of Italian descent might include so many stars like Frank Sinatra, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Sylvester Stallone, Leonardo DiCaprio, Steve Buscemi, Quentin Tarantino, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, even... Actually, I didn't know Ariana Grande was of Italian descent and also Tarantino, even though the name, of course, already suggests it. And Nicolas Cage, of course, because Nicolas Cage is... Uh, Francis Ford Coppola nephew. He actually his his name is Coppola, not Nicolas Cage. I mean the surname. Nicholas Cage has some Italian in him. Again, Italian people have such a strong and solid history and culture, but what does the rest of the world think of them? And what do they think about their neighbors? Well, that brings us to <laughs> Italy is a really great guy once you get to know him. Well, I gotta really like cut this video. Okay, we, we like everybody. Come on, dude, it's not true. Italian sometimes can be a little bit like, uh, huh? But then as soon as you get in, you know, they literally take you home to their grandma or mother, you know, and have a dinner with them and lunch every day for the rest of your life. So that's how it works usually, especially in the South. Once you basically enter, you fucked because then you have to eat all the time okay so be prepared to eat but that's just the thing you gotta warm up to them al dente style first of all france is like their best frenemy they smile at each other but secretly they're always uh, we love each other shut up anyway very nice video uh, i don't know like what else can we say like what else can we had i would had that uh uh i will add nothing actually i think the video has gone on already for quite some time I have to say that, yeah, also Italy uh, in the 1900, even from my area here, there was a, a lot of immigration. Actually, some of my relatives uh, immigrated to the U.S. Actually, uh, I, I think because of that immigration, maybe it's part of the reason why I'm actually alive, because from the side of my father, and his great-great-grandfather or something like that 
which he was the one of the first that with a friend of his when he was young he traveled to the US he went to the States and he worked there and he worked there uh, several times in several occasions for years to the point where uh, there, there was a time where the wife thought that the guy was dead and uh, I tell you this anecdote of course at the time um, my ancestor they lived and work, worked in a land that was kind of leased to them and they worked in, in the land as farmers and they just paid you know the yearly whatever to the owner of the land which is you know landlord eh, comes from so in the in the in back in the days in Italy when you received uh, a telegram usually the municipality police i vigili o i carabinieri i think more the vigili municipality police they came and they brought you the telegram so my ancestor my great great grandmother all of a sudden so those guys showing up at the door and uh, she started to cry that's the story because uh, she thought that those guys were taking the news of her husband dying overseas when in fact when she opened the telegram the telegram stated that the guy had bought the land that they leased you know of all, all those years he made so much money in the US that actually bought the land that uh, you know that the family had worked on for so many years and I think uh, I didn't get any of those lands in my family my father didn't get any of course because then um, uh, the, the, the one of those daughters married this other guy that then made my grandmother and then that grandmother made my dad you know but you know this great grandmother whatever left the family of this dude the American guy she got some money and a few cows because women eh? inequality Jesus and also because was the man was supposed to take care of you know the wife so they gave her some money and two cows something like that something stupid like that and, and actually you know the other male of the family inherited a lot of that land which they still have nowadays actually but anyway I wanted to say thanks to the immigration and to the US uh, perhaps you know those people lived in prosperity enough then all those daughters and sons managed to marry and procreate down to my father and then me which is pretty freaking awesome Thank you very much, U.S. and the boom of the time. So anyway, we close with that and I'll see you later. You take care of yourself. Ciao.